The development of ear can be divided into that of external ear, middle ear and inner ear. Ear is developing from all the three germinal layers that is from ectoderm, endoderm and mesoderm. And each anatomical division has got a distinct origin and unique developmental process. So the inner ear is first of the three anatomical parts of the ear to form and uh, starting from third week of embryo thickening of the ectoderm called aortic plug cord is formed. We saw that in the development of face lens plug cord in relation with developing eye, nasal plug cord for future nose and like this aortic plug cord for developing ear all are ectodermal proliferations. So as already told the inner ear is first of the three anatomical parts of ear to form and then this aortic plug cord or the aortic disc appear dorsolateral to the hindbrain and this aortic plug cord invaginates into the mesenchyme that is it invaginates into the mesoderm forming the aortic pit and the side of this aortic pit fold together and fuse so that a hollow structure is formed which is called the aortic vesicle okay so aortic plug cord then the aortic pit and then the aortic vesicle and this aortic vesicle is lined with a columnar epithelium and uh, and this aortic vesicle later go deep to the surface ectoderm and they form aortic capsule ultimately this aortic vesicle will differentiate to form all the components of the membrane is labyrinth and also the internal ear structures associated with the hearing and balance. Tubular cochlear ganglion is formed at this stage and later it split into vestibular and cochlear portions. So uh, from aortic plug cord going to aortic pit and later aortic vesicle. And this aortic vesicle has two visible regions. One is a ventral part and a dorsal part. So from the ventral part, the uh, it forms the inner ear structures involved in hearing, mainly the cochlear duct and the saccule. The, from the aortic vesicle, I already told a ventral part and a dorsal part. And from the ventral part or the saccular part or the cochleosaccular part, the inner ear structures involved in hearing are formed that is the cochlear duct and the saccule and from the dorsal utricular part that forms the vestibular system that is a utricle semicircular canal and the endolymphatic saccule that is this aortic vesicle elongates within the first four week to form a tube like structure which is called the endolymphatic appendage Soon after, a groove-like indentation form and demarcation or, uh, demarcates a tubular diverticulum on the medial side of the endolymphatic appendage. And this diverticulum differentiates into endolymphatic duct and the sac which continues to grow until around the age of 4. The aortic vesicle is filled with endolymph with surrounding mesenchyme that hollows out to create spaces filled with perilymph. Okay. So, uh, from the ventral saccular component, the tubular cochlear duct, by 6th week, uh, this uh, cochlear duct is formed and this cochlear duct grow and it spirals two and, a, two and a half times forming the membranous cochlea. And the saccule connect to the utricle via a duct called ductus reunions. Okay, so it has got a saccular portion and a utricular portion and also endolymphatic sac and the endolymphatic duct. There is also utricular saccular duct and the, and the ductus reunions. Okay. And from the dorsal utricular portion forms a utricle and also the semicircular canal which are mainly the organs of balance. So uh, to remember that the aortic vesicle is the one which is differentiating to form all the components of the membranous labyrinth and the internal ear structures associated with the hearing and balance. It is the aortic vesicle. The mesoderm surrounding the aortic vesicle form cartilaginous aortic capsule and this cartilaginous aortic capsule which get ossified by around 23rd week of uh, embryonic life to form the bony labyrinth. Okay, 
So the mesoderm surrounding this aortic vesicle form cartilaginous aortic capsule which later get ossified to form the bony labyrinth. Also the cartilaginous aortic capsule form vacuoles that coalesce to fluid filled perilymphatic spaces. So inside the aortic vesicle there is endoleaf and uh, around the um, aortic vesicle that is in the bony labyrinth there is a perilymph. Okay. So here you can see the development of the inner ear in association with the middle ear and also the external ear. Okay. Now development of the middle ear. The structures of the middle ear that is the tympanic cavity and the eustachian tube are primarily derived from tubotympanic recess that is an endodermal extension of the first pharyngeal pouch which was described in the uh, earlier along with the pharyngeal pouch. So around fifth week of development this tubotympanic sulcus extend laterally to approach the floor of first pharyngeal cleft. That is from the first pharyngeal cleft develops the external auditory canal and in relation to that inside that is a pharyngeal pouch from which develop the middle ear that is the uh, uh, tympanic cavity and also the eustachian tube. Okay and in between this uh, it remains separated by mesoderm. So that is why that is the place of the tympanic membrane and the tympanic membrane is a trilaminar layer. So the, from the distal portion of the tuber tympanic sulcus develop the tympanic cavity. Anatomically that is a tympanic cavity divides into an upper attic and a lower atrial chambers. And gradually it surrounds the ossicle and their attachments and also the chordal tympani. Eustachian tube is formed from the proximal portion of the tuber tympanic sulcus. And the eustachian tube show most growth during the week of 16 to 28 weeks. And the middle ear ossicle initially form around 6th week of development. Malleus and incus from the Meckel's cartilage of the first pharyngeal arch. And stapes has got dual origin. That is a stapes superstructure is from the Richter's cartilage of the second arch. And the foot plate is developing from the neural uh, crest cells that is the autocyst. Okay. And the development of the... Uh, external layer that is from pinna and also the external artery canal. The pinna is developing from the uh, mesoderm of the first and second arches proliferate at the end of fourth week of development uh, as six prominences or auricular hillock and they form around the external artery canal and eventually fuse to form pinna. So three from uh, first arch and then four, five and six is from the second arch. So 1, 2 and 3 uh, arches form tragus, helix and simba conca and the 4, 5 and 6 form conca, antihelix and the antitragus. So and the external artery canal is developing from the dorsal portion of the first pharyngeal groove that is the ectodermal invagination between the first and second pharyngeal arches. Ectodermal invagination forming the external artery canal and this extends towards the developing middle ear structures. By 18th week, external auditory canal is completely patent and it expands to produce the typical morphology. Okay, so this is the development of inner ear, then the uh, middle ear structures and the external auditory canal and also the pinna. Okay, so all the three are developing from distinct uh, germ layers. As you can see in this, that is the uh, pinna uh, is developing from mesoderm as six hillocks fusing. Then the external auditory canal is basically ectodermal in origin. And the tympanic membrane is from all the three germinal layers 